So we're going to have a look at some of the bits that will go with exercise 5C now. We've got about 20 minutes to look at this. So we're going to try and find the equations of lines when you are either just being given two points or where you have been given a point and a gradient. So far, we haven't really had to come up with the equations of lines. We've just been looking at finding the gradients and interpreting the equations of lines that we've got here. So I have got um, an example. I want to find out what the equation of a line is that goes through the point 3, 5 and has the gradient 2. Well, I can imagine what that looks like. Okay, I could do a quick sketch and I could think, okay, the coordinate 3, 5 is somewhere up here and it's going to have a sort of gradient that looks like this. But I don't know, is it going to cross here? Is it going to cross here? Is it going to cross here? I'm not quite sure about some of those things. So how would you previously have done this at GCSE? Does anybody remember how you would have found the equation at GCSE? Khadija, do you remember? So this is x and y, and this is? And that's the gradient, so it's m. Good. So you'd substitute that into what? OK. This is going to be the first and last time that you do this in A-level maths, because we're not going to use y equals mx plus c anymore. So this is the first and last time in A-level maths we will be using y equals mx plus c to find the equation of a line. And if I see anyone using it after we do this example, I will make you do it again in the new way. And you have to trust me why, OK? So we're going to substitute in. y is 5, m is 2, x is 3, and we have plus c over here. And then we're just going to solve the equation. So 5 equals 6 plus c. So what do I need to do to both sides? Minus 6, minus six from both sides. So I get minus 1 is c. I'm still not finished because I need to now write out the equation. So the equation of the line is y equals minus, no, um, what's the gradient? So y equals 2x and the intercept is minus 1. So the equation of the line is y equals 2x minus 1, which means if I was going to go back to doing that sketch again, it is actually going to cross at minus 1. Whoops. And it has some coordinate over here, which is 3, 5. OK, so that's what it would look like as a sketch. But like I just said, that's going to be the last time that we're going to have a look at using y equals mx plus c because we're going to use the new way, which is going to be used all of the time. OK, so you're going to have to listen to what this new way is and where this has come from. Suppose, so imagine that x1, y1 is some fixed point on the line that we specify. For example, in the previous question, it was 3, 5. So x1, y1 is the one that is fixed or that is given to us, that's actually got numbers. And I can tell that because I've put these subscripts here to say that it's a specific value of x and a specific value of y. Then I suppose that x, y, a different coordinate that doesn't have subscripts, represents a generic point on the line. What does it mean to be a generic point on the line? Any point. Any point, okay? So this x, y, it could be here, it could be here, it could be, it could be anywhere at all, okay? It is a generic point that is on the line. And it's allowed to change as we consider those different points on the line. Then the gradient, m, would be y minus y1, so the change in y, divided by the change in x, which will be x minus x1. And if I rearrange this by multiplying up by x minus x1, which is going to have to be bracketed, I will get y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. And this is going to be the new way that we think about the equation of a line. It is much, much, it's much more superior. It's better than the other one. You'll have to take my word for it now. And then if you want, when you're doing a question in the future, you can try doing y equals mx plus c and see how much longer it's going to take you to do it. So the equation of a line that has a gradient m and passes through a point x1, y1 is y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. And just the only thing you really need to know here is the y1 and the x1 refer to 
the points. This y and this x are the general ones that are just could be anywhere on the line, which are really similar to the general y and x that we have here and here. In fact, they're the same general y and x that we have here. So we're going to revisit the question that we just did on the first page using this formula. And this formula didn't magically come out of nowhere. It came from the definition of how you find the gradient. And it came from rearranging it to make it look like this. So we have got here, this is what x1 is. And this is what y1 is. And this is what m is. So really similar to before, apart from I've called it x1 and y1. And I'm just going to go straight in with what the formula says, which is y minus 5 equals m brackets x minus 3. If the question said, find the equation of the line, and you wrote this, you would get full marks. OK? It's done. That's the equation of the line. They might say, give the equation of the line in this particular form, in which case you then need to do a bit more to it. But if it doesn't say that, and in, when you get to year 13, lots of the questions don't ask for you to do that extra bit of working out, you're completely done at this stage, and it's going to save you time, and it's going to save you mistakes where you're solving an equation to try and find out what C is. So we're just going to keep going with this to show that it is the same as the one on the previous page. So we have y minus 5 equals, let's expand the brackets, 2x minus 6. Sorry, what was my phone going off? Not very good because it's not on silent. And then to finish solving this equation, what would we do to both sides? Plus 5. So we get y equals 2x minus 1, which is the same as what we had on the previous page. If you've got that in your notes, you can see that as a comparison there. It's really quick, OK? The reason people don't like using this is because they are feeling babyish and like, oh, but I like y equals mx plus c. I like that one. You have to say goodbye to it. You've, it's a breakup. It's over. You don't, you're not going back to y equals mx plus c, OK? It's only the new one. y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. Abdi? I don't know why it's not taught in GCSE. Well, 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 yeah, yeah, how good? Because Come on. Then that's the X. I get an X in algebra. <laughs> 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 he said it was funny, but I don't know. It was all right. It was all right. So this is, you're right. Why isn't this taught at GCSE? Perhaps because some of, maybe some of this looks confusing. I don't know. I think it should be taught at GCSE. OK? And then you can find out what the y-intercept is. Basically, when you get to A-level, we're not as interested in the y-intercept, really. It's not actually that special. It doesn't really tell you an awful lot of stuff. It's, it's sometimes useful. But really, the thing that's important is coming up with the equation of the line, because then we're going to do other things with it. We then might find out where it crosses another line, which has loads of applications in things like physics and economics and engineering, where you're trying to find out when things happen together. So we're going to have a look at a couple of these. Um, and we're going to see if we can just come up with what these might look like. Okay, We're going to really quickly come up with the equations of these straight lines. So in a nutshell, you can use this formula whenever you have a gradient and a point. You need a gradient and a point. The gradient I've circled, the point is underlined. That's it. If you've got a gradient and a point, you've got the equation of a line. So we're going to really quickly um, see if we can just answer what these ones are. So what would this one look like when it's our y minus y1 equals m brackets? So it's going to be y minus 2 equals? Yeah. Yeah, if you go in the cupboard, there's some on the third shelf down, I think. So it would be y minus 2 equals 3 brackets x minus 1. OK? So I'm going to give you. 30 seconds to really quickly see if you can write out what these would be. And they don't need to be simplified. You can just literally write out, put the numbers into the equation, please.
plus. Yeah, you should. Yeah, you should write plus for that. Yeah, I'll show you what my answers are in just a second. Um, had anyone ever seen this formula before? No, you had. You'd seen it before in year 10. OK. So well, let's quickly go through these. So this one, because it's got y minus 0, no one wants to waste ink. So no one's going to write y minus 0. We're just going to say y equals 5 brackets x minus 3. Then for this one, it's going to be, what would the one for the third one be? Um, Abby, what do you get for the third one? You've got y minus 4 equals 2x plus 3. Did you have any brackets in them? Yeah. Good. So you should be y minus 4 equals 2 brackets x plus 3. Um, Zainab, what did you get for this fourth one? Y plus 5 equals half x minus 1. Y plus 5 equals a half brackets x minus 1. And then for the last one here, Abdi, what did you get for the last one? Um, y plus 4 equals 9 brackets x plus 4. Perfect. So what, is, what, is it, what does the formula tell you to do in this So you have to manipulate this to make it y equals. So y equals mx plus d is still useful, but not to... To try and create it in that form. It's better to create it in this form and then do some manipulation to get y equals, and then you can find out the intercept. Mm. Andrew, did you have a question? Yeah, um, would it be quick to do this in unit and try create in the form of y equals mx plus d? Yes, I, I believe this is the best method, unless they say to you, the, unless they say this, that it passes through the point 0, 5 and has gradient 4 because it's telling you the y-intercept and it's telling you the gradient, in which case that's pretty obvious that you should just say that it's y equals 4x plus 5. But that's a very special case where it's good, they're telling you that it crosses the y-axis at 5. I would say, like, all the time, this is going to be the better form. And I've written in the note just down here, you may try and, like, avoid doing this method because you prefer the GCSE one. One of the things that you need to do as a student in my class is to trust me. I've taught A-level for years and years and years, and I know what are the best methods. I also know what are the, the methods that my students who get A's and A-stars are, and what are the methods that students who don't get the top grades, what they do, and I know which ones work best for them as well, OK? So we're going to do two examples that hopefully we'll squeeze in before the end of the lesson, and then I'm going to set you some homework, and you'll be able to go through these bits as well, OK? So we are now going to try and find out the equation of a line with two points. On this previous slide, we did the equation of the line with a point and a gradient. We don't have a point and a gradient here. So what do you think we need to do if we have two points? Good. So when you have two points, the first thing you need to do is work out m. Then the second thing you do is use the formula. That's it. So I want to find the equation of the line that goes through these two coordinates, giving my equation in this particular form here. So I'm going to work out what m is. Abdul Rahman, what is the equation, uh, sorry, what is the, the gradient of this one? How, tell me, talk me through it, please. So you're going to do 2 minus 5. So you're going to do 2 minus 5 over, over 6 minus 4, which is minus 3, Minus 3 over 2. So we've got negative 3 over 2 for this bit. And I know that my point that it is going to go through, well, which point is it going through? Either. OK, I could pick 4, 5, or I could pick 6, 2. The magic thing of this formula is it's just going to give you the same equation. It will give you the same equation. So I'm going to go with just the first one that I see. So my gradient is minus 3 over 2. And my coordinate is 4, 5. In other words, my x1 and my y1. Anyone think they remember the formula without having to look at it? Y, y minus y1. So y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, like this. That's the equation of the line, done. But now you can see they want it in this form. They don't want y equals mx plus c. They want, what did we call this one? Standard form. The standard form. They want it in the standard form. If you did it the GCSE way, you would get it in the y equals mx plus c way, and then you'd need to put it into the standard form. What a waste of time. This way, we're ready to just go straight in and put it into the standard form. Now, one of the things about the standard form is these all need to be integers. So is there a suggestion of what I should do here? 
times it everything by two, okay? I'm gonna times this by two. I'm gonna times this by two, and I'm gonna times this by two. Sometimes people think, well, why didn't you multiply the x by two and the four by two? You have by multiplying this by two, okay? If you multiplied this by two and these by two, you've actually multiplied it by two twice. So you've multiplied it by four, okay? Now we've got to this stage, we're just gonna expand. So we get minus three x plus 12, careful it's a plus. And then we're just gonna put everything all onto one side. So I'm gonna put the three x over there. So that's three x plus two y minus 22 equals zero. That doesn't look like a 22, so I'm gonna just do that again. And there's the equation of the straight line in standard form. Look at that. Four lines of working to get there. Nice and easy. So there is one for you to have a go at here. I think we'll probably just do this one together. And then I'll, just because we've only got two minutes left, and then we'll at least see what's happening. So we want to find the equation of the line that goes through these points, and we want it in standard form. So of course we're going to have to do the gradient. Hamza, would you be able to help me do the gradient for this? I'm going to find the gradient between these two points. Five minus nine. Five minus nine. Um, four plus one. And four plus one. Five minus nine is minus four, and four plus one is five. So we've got minus four fifths. And, minus pardon? It's four minus minus one, which is four plus one. Yeah, good question. And so my point, I'm going to maybe not have to write this out. I'm going to use one of these points. I'm just going to use the first one I see. But you might prefer this one because they're both positive. Whatever you want to do, I don't mind. They're still going to give you the same answer. So it is y minus y1, which is 9, equals m brackets x minus x1. So what will that be? It'll be x plus 1, OK? Then we're going to multiply everything by 5. So I get 5y minus 45 equals minus 4 x plus 1. Then I'm going to expand the brackets and put everything on one side, OK? Like this. So you should end up with 4x plus 5y. And I'm going to add 4. So you get minus 41 equals 0. And I'm just going to stop that recording there.